when you decide, now is the time to go build much powerful integrated solutions, right? So you could have your power apps, you could have your flow and run through business processes. You could go customize the list form the way you want, getting not only the data from the current list, but also maybe getting data from another list. So there are lots of possibilities now with these uh, tool sets from Microsoft to go structure the business process you have. So integrated solutions, I think this isn't new. We have a ton of integrations uh, for end users or power users uh, to go and uh, do different things, especially in SharePoint, we have page approvals. Uh, by the way, HubJoin approvals is available in targeted release if you haven't seen the message in the post. Um, so you can try that too custom forms and, and other flow integration features in SharePoint. Of course, if people want a simple solution to get data and, and have surveys, we do have Microsoft Forms, uh, which we are now seeing uh, being adopted by um, several end users to go collect and, and see what responses they get. With Flow, you can easily now move those to a list as well. Um, I wanna quickly show demo for integrated solutions. Um, this is going to be repeating tables. So, um, if you want to see the full demo, really thanks to um, Shane, um, who has been doing a lot of Power Apps work. Um, I think he does nothing but Power Apps. Um, he went with this model, taking the same concept as we envisioned to like gallery controls or the repeating tables, right? So if you use that model, how would repeating tables work and what are the things you need to do? Um, so uh, this is the link. Um, I think if there is someone doing the chat, please paste this uh, information in the chat. And it's a three-part series um, for folks that are not familiar with uh, Power Apps. It might take some time, but for folks familiar with Power Apps, you will find uh, this to be really, really simple way to bring repeating tables. So I'm going to show you the demo uh, for that. Uh, I built a simple thing uh, based on uh, Shen Yang's uh, documentation. So here's my regions. So I have multiple. Uh, I want to add multiple rows of regions in in one go. So here's my Power App. And here's my regions power app I built. So maybe in another call, I can go in detail, but I'm going to show you the high level pieces that, that makes this work. So if you uh, play this, I can add regions. I get the options to add. So I can add USA. I can have language, English, and owner. This is something very important, right? Now, um, in normal integrations with data sources, especially with SharePoint, let's say, I will have the ability to search for users because I already know it's a people field. Um, but what if I actually want to do something like repeating table? Well, I have the model of uh, enter the uh, you know email uh, or the name, and I can search Office 365, and it's going to come back with an email address. Great. Now I can add this in the repeating table. I can go back. I can say... New Zealand, Oops, sorry, English, New Zealand, and owner, I can again search for Nestor, and then that hopefully comes back with his email address. And I can add another one, India, let me add Hindi, and owner, I don't know, yeah, okay, Patty, right? Now, if I save, only then this is going to go to SharePoint. Look at how fast that was. And now if I go back to my list, you should see USA, New Zealand. And the reason why it didn't add India is because I did not click plus. I basically uh, did not enter that into the uh, con collection. So that's why you didn't see that coming up here. Uh, but now this is really simple, right? Now you can like beautify this app and do whatever you want to do to make it uh, much nicer for users. So uh, the, the real sauce is in the gallery control. So the gallery control needs to hold values before you push to the data source. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding the values in a local collection called line items. And how that is get initialized is when you click add regions, I'm initializing a collection 
is they create clear collectors. It's clearing everything and it's, it's readying the uh, object for collection. And with the model, region name, region language, region owner, and I also have a add icon and, and a delete icon as well. Uh, but add icon is basically the key thing that I have here with true or false. And finally, I'm using user mail uh, string that I control for getting the data uh, of the user email from Office 365. And if you see the gallery control, uh, each of the text box, so this text box right here, region name is mapped to region name, right? So that's the property you saw in the line item collection. And similarly for language, it's mapped to the region language. For owner, it's mapped to uh, in a different way where it's checking some conditions and saying it is user mail and then map to region owner. Now what happens when I click search is that uh, I am uh, using the Office 365 connector to search the user based on the text value that people have entered into the text box. And then if I find something, I am getting the mail property from that object and I'm just getting the first object. So you could have more conditions to, to select the user you want. Um, and then I am setting that into a local object, again, user mail, and then I'm setting the text owner email control dot text property to the user mail. So that's how I get the value for the user email from Office 365 and then set it. Now, when I click plus, uh, it basically patches, right? Um, your adding a value to the collection. So what is the value I need to add? Well, whatever I have in the current line item in the gallery control. So I get line items and this item refers to the current item. And then I set the values for region name as the respective control values. And finally, I set the add icon false. So I don't want to see the add icon anymore, right? I want to see the delete icon going forward so that I can have users delete the line item rather than having more uh, confusion over showing the add icon. And finally, uh, I also now collect an empty line item. So I added one, and I also want to show an empty line item so user can start typing the details for the next line item. And then since I'm using a local variable to also collect the email, which is coming from Office 365, I set that as empty. So the email control text box also has an empty value. So that's the way how I am doing the repeating table with the plus sign and, and also having a way for users to delete. And finally, the secret sauce, when you save. Now the logic is you have everything in the line items collection. So let's iterate through that line item collections and patch the SharePoint data source, right? The SharePoint data source is I've connected to the regions list in my site, and I'm saying uh, the patch function, which is saying patch this data source, in which case it is a regions list, and patch with the default uh, values uh, that I want to pass, which is the, all the columns, right? And now it's very easy. Um, title is going to be the region name property when you iterate through every line item. Language is going to be the region language, and the owner this is where it gets complex. It's a people person column in SharePoint. I know this is really, uh, this really looks ugly. Trust me, we're going to make this better. And the reason why we are doing this and working on this and showing this is because we can learn these things and go back in the product and fix these things. So uh, this is one of the things uh, we uh, certainly have in our radar to simplify repeating tables, especially for users coming from InfoPath. So it's a, um, you would have to right now cut, copy, paste uh, this and, and basically use it in your uh, solution if you're doing it. I think Shane has uh, this in his blog post as well. Um, so basically, this you're giving the OData representation of the people uh, person column in SharePoint. That is how it's represented in Power App. So you're using that, and you're basically uh, mapping the uh, region owner, which is the email address, to that particular field. And finally, uh, this will go and patch the data in SharePoint. After it comes back, we're basically now setting everything to empty list, right? So we clear collect. We are clearing the collection and getting it ready for the next set of uh, rows to be added to SharePoint. So 
that's how we do uh, repeating tables um, in in uh, Power Apps. It's it's really a little bit uh, harder today for especially users that are used to doing the UX way, uh, but this is something we are looking to improve next year and see how far we can push the product to do the thing for the user rather than users specifying all of these stuff to do uh, in using expressions. But it's a good start. We have seen a lot of people adopt this. So if you are looking for like repeating tables is the one that stops me from moving InfoPath to Power Apps, well, fear not. We have options and solutions for you. And these are all supported ways to build these things. So uh, that's another good thing. Um, so that's the end of my talk. Um, there are a lot of um, customer stories. If you're looking to uh, look at how other companies are transforming their business process using Power Apps and uh, Microsoft Flow, Power Automate, you can go to the link and um, basically look at all of the stories in detail. Uh, there's also a roadmap slide. If you go to my um, talk from Ignite, I have the roadmap slide there as well. And this presentation, if you go to the Ignite link again, you can download it. So uh, if you are looking for that, that's also available. Uh, well, that's for me. Uh, that's it from me today.